everybody welcome back to my channel I'm so glad you could join me today I hope everybody's doing well I'm very humbled that you decided to visit me today because out of all the channels on YouTube you chose my channel and I'm very grateful I know how busy this time of the year is for everybody so the fact that you took some time to visit me really makes me feel good and by the way guys if you're new welcome to my channel I always forget to welcome the newcomers and if you've been following my channel you'll know that I always give a little introduction but don't worry because we're going to jump into the tutorial in a few moments so anyway guys Christmas is just a few days away and I know it's probably a little bit too late to make anything for Christmas gifts but maybe you can make something for the New Year's coming up and if you have the beads from Didi's Deluxe Bead Box you're in the right place and if you don't have the beads you're still in the right place because you can still make this beautiful necklace set by using beads from your own stash but anyway guys we're going to be making that gorgeous necklace set that you saw in the introduction it's actually two pieces one piece has two strands and the other one has a single strand but you can totally wear all three if you wanted to for a layered effect and like I said we're going to be using beads from Didi Selux bead box we're going to use the December edition the name of that box is Winter Escape so as you can imagine it's filled with gorgeous wintry themed beads and when I say wintry theme I'm referring to the colors mostly now if you're not familiar with Didi's Deluxe Bead Box I'll leave a link down below so you can go to the website and check it out they're based out of Canada and I absolutely love all of their boxes and if you do go to the website don't forget that the pricing is in Canadian dollars so if you live in the US you're going to have to do a conversion I always put some information down below in the description section of the video and I always put the conversion rate at the time that I post the unboxing of a box so what I'll do is I'll leave a link to the unboxing video and you'll be able to find all of the information in the description section of that video I think I'll probably end up putting it in the description of this video as well down below if you scroll down below you'll see the description section I think it says show more or something like that if you click on that it expands the description section I know most of you already know that but I know some of you probably don't and that's why I'm explaining it a lot of it depends on what kind of device you're using as well but anyway guys I know you're anxious to jump into the tutorial but before we start let me remind you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so because it really does help my channel and it helps me as a content creator to stay motivated to create more videos for you and as always I'll leave some timestamps down below in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video and I'll also leave a list of all the materials and the tools that I'm going to be using today so without any further ado let's go ahead turn the camera around and we'll get started and here we have Diddy's Deluxe Bead Box for the month of December the name of this box is Winter Escape as you can see the box is filled with gorgeous winter themed beads and I'm saying winter theme because of the blue and white colors there are many beads in this box that remind me of winter so let me show you which beads we're going to be using we're going to definitely use this gorgeous strand of fire agate and these agate beads are in a blue and white color as you can see there are different variations of blue and white but there's even some gray tones as well and these are eight millimeters in size and we're probably going to use the majority of the beads on this strand I definitely want to use these frosted beads these are also eight millimeters in size the color of these beads is supposed to be white but to me it looks pretty transparent and of course I love the frosted effect now this strand really intrigued me when I first saw it because initially I thought it was wood but this is actually wood jasper and these are eight millimeters in size and these definitely give off a winter cabin vibe and I'm probably going to use the majority of these beads as well I just really love the look of these beads because I like wooden beads but wooden beads are usually very lightweight and I don't necessarily like lightweight beads in my necklaces so it's nice to be able to have the look of wooden beads but the weight of a gemstone I'm going to be using some of these gorgeous glass beads these are called irregular ice cubes they measure 15 by 12 millimeters and they're completely clear as you can see but you'll see later on when I take them out of the bag how gorgeous these beads are they really do reflect a lot of light as you can see I have a couple of loose beads here that's because I was playing with the beads earlier on but anyway there's one more thing we're going to be using we're going to be using these gorgeous spacer beads these are four millimeters in size and as you can see they have a rib design on the surface they're called Tibetan gold rib beads and these are going to add a little touch of metal in my design today and that's it from this collection and here we have some more items we're going to be needing obviously these are not from the box these are from my own stash I have some seed beads here these are size 80 seed beads and they're not Japanese seed beads they're actually from Michael's I think they're Czech beads so they're very irregular but we don't need them to be precise today because we're not going to be doing any bead weaving we're going to simply string them on beading wire I also have these two connectors here these are two to one strand connectors let me show you as you can see it's very plain it doesn't have any kind of design on it sometimes I like the components to be plain because that way they don't clash with any of the designs that I'm trying to make 
but these are perfect and as you can see they have two loops on the bottom and one at the top so obviously I'm going to be connecting two strands to the lower loops another major component is this one right here this is actually the ring portion of a toggle clasp and again it's a very plain looking design and I'm actually going to be using it this way and I'll be connecting some strands to it I'm not going to be using the bar portion of the toggle clasp because I'm not going to use it as a clasp I'm actually going to be hanging some beads from the bottom and make a pendant out of it and I have a piece of chain here that's what I'm going to be hanging the dangles from you can use any scrap piece of chain and I have two Tibetan tube beads let me show you as you can see it's golden color and it measures six by four I believe it might be a little bit less than four in diameter but as you can see it has a nice big hole and I'll show you how I'm going to use these later on I also have some ball head pins here I'm going to be creating dangles with them these are the thin kind which will allow me to do some wrap loops I have some wire guardians as well and I have some crimp tube covers and I have some crimp tubes I will be doing some traditional fold over crimping today and usually when I do that I use crimp tube covers but I'm also going to be using these clamshell covers on one of the necklaces and for that necklace I'm simply going to squash the crimp tubes and hide them in that clamshell and there are a couple of other items I forgot to include a couple of lost the claw clasps and here's some jump rings as well the jump rings are six millimeters in size and I think that's all I may have missed something I don't know but I'll figure it out once we get going so now that we've gone over the materials we're going to go ahead and get started I'm going to start by creating the focal pendant and these are the items I'm going to need for the pendant as you can see I have three of those beautiful ice cube beads and I also have my chain I'm not going to use all of the links I'm only going to use some of the links but I'm not going to remove the excess links until I hang the dangles and I also have the toggle component and some head pins so let's go ahead and prepare these beads I'm simply going to thread one onto the head pin like this I'm going to grab the pin at the top of the bead just like that kink it switch to this portion of my pliers I don't want the loop to be very big so I'm kind of at the tip of my pliers and now I'm going to take the tail wrap it around the nose of my pliers flip my pliers around and continue to wrap to the back just like that and now I'm going to attach it to the chain I'm going to slide the link of the chain inside the loop that I created like this and now using some skinny pliers I'm going to grab that loop just like that and with another set of pliers I'm going to grab the tail and I'm going to do a couple of wraps and you can do as many wraps as you want to and now using some flush cutters I'm going to snip off the excess pin and if you see a little end sticking out you should tuck it in so that's the first dangle and now I'm going to load a second bead onto a head pin like that and same thing again I'm going to grab the pin at the top of the bead like this kink it switch wrap the tail around the nose flip my pliers around and continue to wrap to the back just like that and now I need to decide which link to hang it from so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it into one of these links but I'm not going to do any wraps until I see how it hangs so I'm just going to keep it like this and prepare the third one so now I need to decide where to hang this third one and I think I'm going to hang it on this link right here and again I'm not going to close it with wraps until I see how it hangs and that looks pretty good to me so now it's safe to do the wraps let me do this one first I'm going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps snip off the excess and tuck it in so 
So now let me do this one. snip off the excess and now tuck it in so this is what we have so far I think it looks super cute so now all we need to do is attach it to this component and I have a choice I can either use a jump ring or I can use one of the links that's on the chain I think I will use one of the links that's on the chain and I think I'm actually going to use this one right here. This one has a dangle on it, but I'm going to very carefully open it up and attach it to this component. Now this chain has open links, which means there's a little cut there. So all I have to do is open it up. I don't need to cut it. And let me carefully slide the excess chain off. And now I just need to connect it to this component, just like that. And let's close it up. So this is what we have so far. I think it's adorable. So now that I've made the pendant, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the strands. Here are the beads I'm going to need for the first strand. This will be the one that sits the lowest. I'm going to go ahead and build this one first, and then I'll move on to the other two later on. Now I've already been playing around with this design, so I kind of know what I'm doing. And whenever I create bead patterns for a necklace, I use my magic rods. I carry these in my Etsy store. As you can see, they're pretty long. These are actually the 12 inch long rods. And what I like about them is that they have stoppers, which means that I can load beads and have them up against each other real snug. And that allows me to get accurate measurements. But the best thing about the rods is that I can use them with all kinds of beads. I can use them with seed beads, large beads, small beads, beads of all kinds of shapes. Now, obviously, if you don't have these rods, you can use a beading board or you can use a scrap piece of beading wire or you can just simply lay out your beads on your mat. It's up to you how you want to do it, but I'm going to be using the rods today. But before we get started, I need to remove the beads from these strands. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to remove my stopper. And I think I'm going to start with one of these spacer beads and then some of these wood jasper beads. And like I said, I've been playing with this design a little bit, so I think I know what I'm doing. But I haven't figured out the number of beads yet. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I think I'm gonna do seven. I like working with odd numbers for some reason. So that looks really nice. I forgot to pull out the Tibetan beads, the tube beads. I'm going to put one at this end and this is the end that's going to connect to the pendant. Let me put a stopper on. So now let me flip it over and now I think I'm going to load some of the frosted beads on this end and I think I'm going to load the same amount. I'm going to load seven. I really like that. And now I'm going to load a spacer bead and then another seven of these frosted beads. That looks really good. Let me load another spacer bead. Now before I go any further I'm going to measure this. So let me put a stopper back on. And now I'm going to bring the beads in close. Let me go ahead and measure it. I have about 7 inches. And I think I want this layer to be 20 inches long. My necklace today is going to have three layers. The first one's going to be at the collarbone. The second one's going to be lower. And this third one is going to be 20 inches long. So now that I know the length of this, I can fill in with the seed beads. So I'll need approximately 2.5 inches worth of seed beads. And that'll give me a length that's 9.5 inches long which is perfect because I need to take into account the two to one connector, the jump rings, the clasp and all of that. So let me go ahead and load these seed beads now. Once again, I'm removing the stopper and I'm just going to load about two and a half inches worth of seed beads. So 
So now I need to measure it. And it looks like I need to add a couple more seed beads. So this should be enough. Let me put my stopper on. And now let me bring everything in close. So here's my first rod. I think it looks super cute. I really like the look of it. And now I'm going to load a second one just like that one. Okay, as you can see, I loaded both rods. Another nice thing about the rods is that you don't have to count beads. You simply load one rod and then hold the second one up against it to make sure you have the same amount of beads. So now we're going to go ahead and put them on beading wire. I'm going to be using beetle on today. This is the 49 strand beetle on and it's pretty thick. It's 0.024 inches thick or 0.61 millimeters. And I'm using thick wire today because that's all I had in my stash, but you can certainly use something a little bit thinner. And the color is satin silver, but you can use any color. I'm going to cut myself a pretty decent piece. Usually I give myself at least two inches at each end to do the crimping. And since my necklace is going to be 20 inches long, I'm going to cut myself a 24 inch piece. Let me measure it. And now I need to cut this in half. So let me find the center of the beading wire. I'm going to go ahead and load one of them first. It's a good idea to put a clip on the end guys or a bead stopper if you have one. So now to offload from the rod, I'm simply going to hold onto the rod like this and then remove the stopper from this end. And now I'm going to grab a stack of seed beads between my index finger and my thumb and load them directly onto the beading wire. Just like that. Since the rod holds the beads in perfect alignment, it makes it very easy to thread them in multiples. So I'm going to keep loading these beads until I get to the end. As you can see, I've loaded all the beads. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the pendant. I'm going to do this strand first and then I'll do the other one off camera so this video isn't too long. So here's my pendant. Here are my crimp tubes. And here are my wire guardians. And I'm going to crimp off this end first. This is the end that has the Tibetan tube bead. So let me load one of the crimp tubes on. And now one of the wire guardians. I'm going in one end like this. And now I need to feed the beading wire through the other end. Like this. And now I'm going to feed the beading wire through the crimp tube. And slide everything up. This beading wire is pretty thick so let me use some pliers. You want to make sure that crimp bead is right up against the wire guardian. And you also want to make sure that it's sitting inside the channel of that wire guardian. And of course you want to make sure that the beading wire is not crossed inside that crimp tube, which is really difficult to see. But if you hold the beading wire like this, it should be easier. And now using some crimping pliers, I'm going to place the crimp tube inside the first notch, which is the one that creates the U-shape. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's that very first one. And now I'm going to go ahead and squeeze down, just like that. Turn it on its side. And now using one of the first three notches, I'm going to place it inside the second one. I usually use the second one, but you can use whichever one you want. Let me just place it in there and then I'll show you. I don't know if you guys can see that. So now that it's in there, you're going to squeeze and that folds the crimp tube over. And then I always go to the first notch to squeeze it down a little bit more. And sometimes I use the tip as well. 
and this is what you should have. Now this beading wire is really thick, so I'm not going to be able to thread it through these beads. So I'm just going to cut off the excess. You want to be careful when you do that. You don't want to cut the main beading wire. So now that I've trimmed it off, I'm going to slide it inside the Tibetan tube bead. And that makes a very decorative crimp tube cover. And because we're going to be sliding these other beads up against it, it's not going to move. So now I'm going to do this end, same thing. Thread the crimp tube on. And now let me thread on the wire guardian. Going in one end. And going in the other end. And now I need to thread the tail through the crimp tube. Pull everything down. And once again, you want to make sure that beading wire is sitting inside the channel of that wire guardian. Let me just use my pliers to tighten things up a little bit. So once again, I'm going to place it inside my pliers, separate the beading wire, and squeeze down. Turn it on its side, place it back inside my pliers, and I have it inside the second notch as you can see, and now I'm going to squeeze down again, and switch to the first notch, and I'm using the tip as well, and that looks pretty good, and now I'm going to snip off the excess. Now this end will have a crimp tube cover, so I'm going to slide it on from the bottom, like that. To close it, I'm going to use these crimping pliers. You want to make sure that you're careful so you don't make any dents. And I usually go all the way around the crimp tube cover to make sure I get a nice round shape. And that looks pretty good. So this is one side of the necklace. I have a jump ring and I'm going to use it to connect the strand to the pendant. Let me go ahead and open it up. And now I need to connect the jump ring to the component like this and close up the jump ring. So this is what we have so far. So anyway guys, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this strand and I'm going to do it off camera to save time. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. As you can see, I loaded the second strand and I attached it to the pendant. So now that I've completed this layer, I'm going to move on to the second layer. Let me go ahead and get those beads. Here are the beads for this necklace. As you can see, I have the beautiful fire agate beads and I have some more of the frosted beads. I'm not going to be using a lot of them. I'm just going to use them as accent beads and I have the seed beads and I also have the spacer beads. And this time I'm going to use my 9 inch rods and I have two of them here as you can see. So let me go ahead and load the beads onto the rods and I'll be right back. I have my two rods loaded and I haven't loaded the seed bead yet because I'm not sure exactly how many I need. I'm going to go ahead and load the beads onto beading wire and then I'll figure it out after I get done. But I'm thinking this necklace should be at least an inch to an inch and a half shorter than the previous one. As you can see the bead pattern consists of four agate beads and then a spacer bead, a frosted bead and another spacer bead and then I repeated the same pattern all the way down. Now these are a little bit different because this is the center of the necklace. The center of the necklace is going to have seven agate beads. So this will be the top of the necklace and that's where the seed beads are going to go. So let me go ahead and put these on beading wire and I'll finish it off the exact same way using the fold over crimp method and I'll be right back. As you can see, I've completed the second tier of the necklace and I crimped it off and added some crimp tube covers. Like I said before, it's the exact same technique that I used in the other necklace or the other strand. As you can see, each one has a wire guardian and each one has a crimp tube cover as well. And I think it looks really nice. Now I did add a spacer bead here before adding the seed beads. Let me bring out the lower tier and show you what they look like together. So here they are together and I know you can't see the whole thing. In a few moments I'll pan my camera up and then down so you can see the whole thing. But anyway I'm pretty happy with how they look. 
I love having the jasper at the bottom because it really highlights those beads. And I know the agate beads are very different, but I tied the whole thing in by adding the frosted beads and the spacer beads. So that's the connection between the lower tier and the upper tier. So now we're going to connect the two strands by using these connector links. And here's some jump rings, two for that side and two for this side. And this part's really easy. Let me open up this jump ring. I'm going to connect it to this loop like this. And now I'm going to connect one of these strands like this. And now let me close it up. So this is how it should look. Let me go ahead and open up another jump ring. I'm going to hook it onto this loop now. And now this strand, like this, and close it up. So this is what we have so far. So now let me go ahead and connect these two the same way. As you can see, I connected this side now. So the only thing we need to connect now is a lobster claw clasp. Here's my clasp. And here are two jump rings. Let me go ahead and open up this jump ring. I'm going to connect the lobster claw clasp just like that and close it up. And now let me open up this jump ring. And this side's just going to have the jump ring and close it up. Let me just connect it and then I'll show you the whole thing. And here's the beautiful necklace. Now we're not done yet. We still have to make one more necklace. It's going to be a shorter length and it's going to have its own lobster claw clasp. So you'll have the option of wearing this double strand necklace by itself, or you could wear the other one by itself as well, or you could wear both the double strand and the collarbone necklace. But let me show you the whole thing. I'm going to pan upwards so you can see the top of the necklace. And now let me come down and show you the pendant. I think it looks lovely. I'm pretty happy with it. So anyway guys, let me go ahead and bring out the beads for the shorter necklace now. As you can see, I've already loaded it on beading wire. And I would say this one's about 16 inches. It'll probably end up being a little bit longer once I add the clasp. But we're going to finish off the ends a little bit differently. Here are two crimp tubes. And here are two clamshell covers. And these have loops on them already. So let me show you how easy this is. The first thing we're going to do is thread on a clamshell cover like this and I'm coming in from the bottom of it. And now a crimp tube. And now we're going to squash that crimp tube. And guys, if you're doing this method, you want to make sure you use really good quality crimp tubes. I like to use the Beetle on brand because they're seamless. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you purchase crimp tubes that are cheap, they usually have seams and when you go to squash them, they may break and these definitely don't break. And now using some chain nose pliers, I'm simply going to squash that crimp tube flat. Make sure it's completely flat and that's all there is to it. And now I'm going to snip off the excess beading wire and you do want to give it a little test to make sure that it's secure and it is. And now I'm going to close this clamshell cover very carefully. You don't want to dent it. Make sure it's nice and closed. And that's all there is to it. Pretty easy. And now let me slide the beads down. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to thread on a clamshell cover from the bottom like this. And then the crimp tube. Bring it all the way down. 
Now this part's a little tricky because the crimp tube is inside that clamshell. So there's not a whole lot of space. But I'm going to reach in here with my chain nose pliers, grab the tube, and then once I think I have the tube, give it a squeeze. Make sure it's nice and flat. Let me show you what it looks like. And now I'm going to cut off the excess beading wire. And now I'm going to close the clamshell cover. It's a very easy way to finish a necklace. Here's my lobster claw clasp. And here are two jump rings. Let me open up this jump ring. I'm going to connect it to the loop of the clamshell cover and close it up. And you do want to make sure there's no gap at all because the clamshell covers have very skinny loops and you don't want them sliding through any gaps at all. So you want to make sure you use jump rings that are thick and jump rings that have clean cuts. Let me open up this one now. Connect it to the necklace. And now connect the lobster claw clasp. And close it up. Check your jump ring from all angles. Make sure it's completely closed. I think this is a super cute necklace. And I can totally see myself wearing this to casual events. These beads actually reflect a lot of light. They're very pretty. So now let me bring out the other necklace and show you the whole set. And tell me that's not adorable. I absolutely love this beautiful set. Definitely a statement necklace set. But like I said, if you wore this collarbone necklace by itself, you would definitely dress it down if you didn't want to wear a statement necklace piece. But anyway, guys, let me show you the top of the necklace. There's the top. And let me pan down so you can see the bottom. There's the bottom. I really love that pendant. But anyway, guys, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. And I don't think I went over these beads with you. What I did is I added some size 8 OC beads in between these ice cube beads, as you can see. And then I did add a spacer bead at each end. And that's basically it. Very simple. It's simple, but it looks gorgeous. So anyway, as always, I would love to put these on and show you what they look like. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Well, yes, I did have to change outfits. You have to wear the right attire with the necklaces, otherwise they're not gonna look good. That's one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of women making. And I think that's why so many people are into the dainty look, because you can wear anything with a dainty look. And this is definitely not dainty, this is definitely a statement piece. I almost just wore the collarbone necklace because that's actually my favorite, but I decided to wear all three to say goodbye to you because I know you wanna see how it looks and you have to agree that it looks so different on. But anyway, guys, I'd be interested to hear what you think about the necklaces. Would you wear all three? Would you wear the collarbone necklace or the double strand? If you could leave some comments down below, I'd love to hear about it. So anyway, guys, I hope I've inspired you. I hope you can make your own necklaces. I wanna wish everybody a wonderful holiday season. Many blessings to you and your family and your friends. Wishing everybody lots of happiness, good health, joy and lots of cheer. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.